So you're building a new PC and the time has come to decide on a power supply. We hope you didn't plan to skimp out here, since having a few dollars off the PSU can end up costing you way more down the line. Not only will a higher quality unit offer better power efficiency and therefore rack up a slightly lower electrical bill, it also won't run the risk of potentially frying all of your expensive hardware. But we've already made a video about the efficiency of power supplies, so we won't bother you with that again. We also discuss everything you need to know about the optimum PSU capacity for each build in that video. If you think it's just the total required wattage of all the hardware components combined, you should probably check it out. The links are in the description. Today, however, we'd like to turn our attention to one aspect of power supplies that doesn't get as much attention and that we only touched on in the previous video, and that is modularity. PSUs come in three flavors when it comes to modularity. Non-modular, semi-modular, and fully modular. Each one has its own pros and cons, and we'll cover all of them in this video. So without any further ado, let's begin. But first, a brief overview of modularity itself. A module is defined as a set of standardized parts or independent units that can be used to construct a more complex structure. It's a broad definition that encompasses modular houses, Lego toys, and everything in between. But in the context of power supplies, modularity refers to the cables. Namely, can the cables be swapped out or are they built in? Fully modular and semi-modular PSUs can be customized to varying degrees. In the former case, all of the cables can be removed or replaced, while in the latter only some come with this modular feature, hence the name. But the cables on a non-modular PSU are all soldered to the unit, allowing for zero customizability. As you can guess, this holds certain implications PC builders should know about, both aesthetic and practical. So let's get through all three types and see what each one has to offer. The main benefit of non-modular PSUs is the price. Since all the cables that you could possibly need are permanently attached to it, non-modular power supplies are cheaper to manufacture. It's important to note that this is not a matter of quality. A non-modular power supply is not necessarily less reliable than its semi-modular and fully modular siblings. It's just more cumbersome. And since some of the many cables attached to the unit simply aren't going to find any use, you'll be left with quite a cable clutter on your hands. At its core, cable management is an aesthetics issue, but having lots of cables clogging up the case can seriously impede the airflow. So it's not all about the looks. Your cooling system could end up working worse than expected simply due to the cable clutter. Still, this doesn't mean that non-modular power supplies are all bad. Novice builders are bound to appreciate them for their ease of use. Since all the cables will already be properly attached, they'll have less trouble connecting everything. No need to figure out what goes where on both ends. And if you've got a larger case, preferably one with plenty of room for cable management, then you can even use a non-modular PSU with a transparent case and no one will be the wiser. Bigger cases generally tend to cost more money, but non-modular power supplies have the benefit of being the cheapest power supplies around, so the price really evens out. Either way, this is the case and the power supply combination we suggest to most novice builders, especially those on a budget. Semi-modular power supplies strike a fine balance between the approachable price of non-modular units and the aesthetic appeal and customizability of fully modular units. They typically come with at least the 24-pin connector permanently attached, with some models also giving the PSI Express and the 8-pin CPU cables the same treatment. The other cables can all be removed or replaced. So why are semi-modular PSUs so popular? Well, the great thing about them is that they offer all of the modularity most people will need not to suffer from clogged up cable clutter. All the cables that come connected to the power supply, be it just the 24-pin connector or the PCI Express and 8-pin CPU cables as well, are cables that you will definitely use. So even if you don't go fully modular, you won't have any cables dangling around for no apparent reason. Now, as we've said, you can get away with non-modular units if you're building inside a larger case without too many issues. It's even a great way to save some bucks. 
But if you're using a smaller case, well, then you'll definitely want the benefits of modularity on your side. It's just easier to fit everything into place when there are no unwanted cables hindering your progress. So if you're building inside a micro ATX case, we highly suggest getting a semi-modular PSU. Now you might be asking yourselves, but wait, if the semi-modular power supplies are all that great, both in terms of price and functionality, why would anyone even bother with fully modular units? And honestly, the answer boils down to just the looks 99% of the time. So if you're looking for a PSU that will look great, perform great, and not obstruct the airflow in any way, all at an acceptable price, then you don't need to bother with fully modular units. The semi-modular ones offer everything you will ever need. But if it's all about the looks and you have plans to build the ultimate transparent case PC where cables will not only be something to hide but an additional feature, then the fully modular units are for you. Since you can replace all wires, you can start to tinker with custom wire colors. And not just the colors, you get to decide on the cable length too. This opens up a whole new avenue when it comes to planning out the aesthetics of your build. But as you'd expect, this comes at a price. On their own, fully modular units aren't that much more expensive than semi-modular ones. But once you start adding custom cables to the mix, all of which are purchased separately, the overall price starts to skyrocket. So for most people, the choice only really boils down to non-modular and semi-modular. Fully modular units are just too much of an overkill for anyone not looking to take full advantage of the opportunities they present, namely customizing the cable color and length. The only practical reason to get a fully modular unit is if you're building a mini ITX gaming PC where the modularity and custom cable length will really help out with the cramped space. And that about does it for this video. To summarize, the power supply modularity is all about whether the cables are permanently attached to the unit or not. Non-modular units have all the cables permanently attached, and so they have to come with all of the cables you could ever need, which more often than not results in unsightly cable clutter. Semi-modular units offer the best of both worlds, leaving all the cables you are bound to have permanently attached in order to bring the price down, but offering the option for modularity with the rest. And fully modular units can have all their cables removed or replaced, which may sound like the best deal, but it's only really necessary if you plan on making good use of custom cables. In any case, we hope you've enjoyed this video. You can let us know if you have by liking it, subscribing to our channel, and leaving a comment. And if you think your friends could benefit from watching this, help them out by sharing this video. Also, if you don't want to miss any of our new videos, click on the bell icon. We upload a new video every week, so the next one is right around the corner. In the meantime, may your games be fun and your losses few. And as always, we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.